Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Um, I have a gentleman right behind me. His name is John. He is a professional color grader extraordinaire. And today he's going to be color grading some DJI Mavic 2 Pro footage, which is very famously known for being very difficult to color grade. So he's just gonna show us some very basic color editing things um, on how we can make the footage look rather nice. John, what kind of projects have you worked on? Put me on the spot here. I've worked on uh, some commercials, some feature films, um, a couple web series, um, probably graded over a hundred things um, wow. in my lifetime, so. Very qualified. Okay, all right, let's dive in. Okay, so we have two clips for John to color grade for us here. So this is the first clip. This is in Yosemite at a beautiful lake, flying the drone right over it. Just want to do some basic color editing and make this look nice. So without further ado, John, go ahead and take it away and show me what you might do to this shot here. Cool. So the first thing um, I would do is probably add a LUT. DJI footage is notorious for not being able to be tamed by just color grading. Um, the reason that is is because D-Log actually records gamut, uh, D-Gamut as well as D-Gamma which is the color space and the curve. So to get us closer uh, to Rec. 709, which is like video standard for web and broadcast television, um, we'll go ahead and use a LUT uh, to get us there. This is available on DJI's website. Um, so we're just gonna go to the info page here on the clip and we're gonna go ahead and add um, a custom camera LUT and we'll go ahead and choose D-Log M to Rec. 709. So automatically that's gonna bring us way closer to the image that we wanted um, to begin with. Uh, so if we look at our waveform here, um, I always use RGB overlay because it'll show you um, color casts that maybe your monitor won't, and I can show you what I mean. If you shift um, color dramatically here and make it really blue, you'll see what should be white waveform for white balance um, will separate into distinct colors. Um, so if we reset that, you can see you're pretty close. You can actually see that um, the image is pretty warm um, in the highlights here. And you can see that represented by the red kind of separating above the other colors. Which um, makes sense, because this this was shot at around golden hour. So we want to preserve that look in the shot. So we'll go ahead and first thing I'll kind of do is look here at, at our uh, waveform monitor here. Um, this zero line represents pure black, while this um, 100 line represents pure white. So anything that pushes beyond those points um, is going to clip into no information. And I can demonstrate that real quick here. If I just push the whites up here, you can see we've pushed past that 100 line and now our mountain has gone to pure white. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go ahead and undo that. If anything, it kind of looks a little hot to me. So I might bring it down just a smidge. I always start with contrast first when I'm looking at an image to see like where everything's falling. And then I'll kind of jump into the, the more creative decisions that we have. I'm gonna bring down the blacks just slightly. We're only really, I mean, we've already lost this area here just by the way that the, the image was shot. This is the only area that we're really at risk of losing if we were to keep pushing that, but that looks pretty good to me. Um, saturation looks pretty good. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move over to another corrector. Okay, so we're gonna leave our contrast um, on correction one in case we need to go back and adjust that later. So this was shot at golden hour. It doesn't really look like it. So we're gonna go ahead and make it a little bit, the overall image warmer. Yeah, that looks... yeah that's much more golden-y. Yeah. And you can also see kind of a green tone coming out here in this warmth. You can kind of see it represented over in the waveform as well. So we'll go ahead and uh, try and pull that down a little bit. We're gonna just add a little bit of magenta in it, which is the opposite of green for everyone keeping track at home. Um, but we're not gonna pull too much out because we are gonna wanna saturate these uh, trees a little bit too. So we don't wanna overdo it. We wanna try and keep all the like similar adjustments. We're gonna go in. Cameron expressed to me that uh, this rock was pretty uh, bright. And so we're gonna try and bring that down a little bit. We'll go ahead again, add another correction here. And then we're also gonna add a mask. 
You can do keying in here, but I always refrain from using keyframes because it pulls the image apart. And especially with lower quality footage, it can really start to tear the image apart quickly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and not do those as much as we can. We're gonna use these like larger brushes to, to do these corrections. Yeah, and I think for this shot, you know, the shot doesn't move around a lot. So putting the keyframe or the mask right there I think would be just fine because you know the shot is really just pretty level and it's just slowly panning in so I think that works. Just bring it more in the line that looks good. So we'll go ahead and add another hue and saturation curves tool here because we're going to go ahead and bring out the green in the uh, trees. So we're going to go to um, first I'm going to do hue versus hue and we're going to kind of select these uh, yellow tones here. And you, I always try and make this as wide as possible to accomplish the goal that I'm trying to do. Um, that just prevents colors from tearing and creating more aliasing. Again, it's kind of, I like to paint with large brushes as much as possible and really reserve those, those finer tools for the times that I really need them because a lot of times it, you don't get the results you want. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pulling a little bit of that yellow out and I'll show you that again on and off. Yeah, very um, subtle. Just to kind of pop those greens a little bit and then we'll go into our Huber saturation and we'll actually grab the greens. So before I, I was shifting the yellow to make it more green, now I'm selecting the green to make it more saturated. So we'll just bring that up to kind of make those trees pop a little bit. Oh yeah, that's great. That. Yeah, that's very subtle but nice. You can see we're already starting to get a little bit of banding in here. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. It's probably mm -hmm. passable. We can also go ahead and go into our video settings here and add a denoise filter. Noise reduction. Yeah, there you go. And just see, that'll definitely help with some of that banding. Mm -hmm. And then along with the um, noise reduction, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of sharpening too, because you lose yes. sharpness right. while you're right, right, right. Yep. using noise reduction. Yeah, that's looking, uh, that's looking great. Bad. Let's show you yeah, the full effects off and on. Yeah, wow. It's a much warmer, more cinematic look than before. Yeah. You know, it's nice. All right, so would that take care of clip number one, you think? Cool, let's do that for number one, and we might come back and make adjustments, but All right. it's looking pretty good. So, John, what would you do for this one? Cool, we're gonna go ahead and start in the same place again um, and add that LUT. It's overall a very blue image, mm -hmm. so if you're going for warmer tones in general, we might want to start with that mm -hmm. and warm it up a little bit. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, no, um, that's fine. This this shot I knew was gonna be pretty warm because it was full sun and it had its ND16 filter on there. So I knew there was gonna be very blues, but I definitely, as as warm as we can kind of make it look without being too unnatural. Somewhere in there, we might play with... Um, that's looking better already, yeah. We might play with... Uh, pulling some of the uh, blue out of the shadows without mm -hmm. making the highlights go too warm mm -hmm. um, so we don't get that like giant split in tonality. I actually I'm gonna go ahead and go back to our color board and we're just gonna um, drop the mid-tones slightly. It's pulling out the green of the trees which is nice. Your images are pretty contrasty so maybe we'll mm -hmm. keep that contrast. Yeah. Go to color wheels for the shadow tones. If we can just warm them up slightly, don't want to go too far. Mm -hmm. It's really blue. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's it's looking infinitely better, honestly. We can also go in and try and go to our. The curves are gonna like bail us out of a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. um, so we can kind of go in here. So hue versus hue, I don't know if I explained this earlier, but it pulls one color and you can choose to either use the selection tool to key. I don't like doing that because it creates noise um, and it creates a very small angle of colors in which it's changing. Mm -hmm. Where I, I like to pick like one full color on the wheel usually and pull that color. Mm -hmm. um, it just helps with noise basically. Yeah. But this will actually change the color of, we're getting, it's getting a little green in there. Right. Um, so we might need to go in and pull the greens out mm -hmm. um, and make it more of like, I don't wanna say gray, but probably a little more gray. Right. Um, so we'll pull like this out and see if that looks better. You can, yeah, already that feels a little better to yeah. me. Yeah, agreed. Um, we can also go into uh, Luma versus Saturation. This is something I, I use all the time on the commercial work I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'll actually clean up the highlights and the shadows by pulling a lot of the color out of them. 
and that just cleans up that black level. And you can kind of see it happen in here, how the waveform changes as I yeah. as I bring down the saturation on that black. It really cleans up that black line mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the mountain here. If I toggle it on and off, you'll see that saturation disappear. Mm -hmm. This is a little um, extreme. We're gonna leave a little bit of saturation there, but it definitely helps clean up the image, makes it a little more of a commercial look. It does kind of pull away from the cinematic look. A lot of what makes film look like film are those cast and hints of color in the shadows and the highlights. Mm -hmm. um, so it might not be the right look for everything. It might even might not even be the right look for this, um, but it's an option. Right. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna create another one of these to add green to our trees. So we'll go ahead and add another hue and saturation curves. And we're gonna go ahead and pull hue versus saturation. We're gonna try and grab this entire chunk of green here. We're just gonna up the saturation here mm -hmm. to give those trees a little more definition and pop them a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Final Cut I feel like has come a long way with their color editing stuff. When I was prepping for this, I was playing with these tools that I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, when I was using Final Cut 10, it was just the color board, so it's right. pretty crazy that they have all these tools now, yep. um, and even the ability to like make selections and stuff. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I usually do on a correction is uh, a vignette of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, I usually like to, to roll my own, um, so we'll just add another color board here, and we'll go ahead and add a shape mask you can really select like what you want um right. you know what what kind of kind of vignette you want mm -hmm. uh, so it, it makes it a really powerful tool and you can really draw your eye like wanted to show off this which i think half here. i think half dome is the subject in this shot right so yeah right. i think i think that would be so we'll go ahead and um do an extreme example but we can pull everything you know around half dome down but it'll just draw the eye in more. Right. We'll make it a little bigger so it's not as aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is definitely the right move for a shot like this. Yeah, um, absolutely. Is I'll also use the blur tool. Um, and put and, some focus like around half dome. Oh, that's a very interesting. Uh, I'll do a, a Gaukison blur here. So in other color programs, it allows you to do this um, all in the color tool. So mm -hmm. this is a little bit different, but um, it should work the same way. So we're gonna go ahead and try and mimic what we did with the uh, other one here. We'll get as close as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. These are tools I use a lot to just draw the eye in. Um, right. You really want to like. You know, you this is great. Force perspective, but. Right. But I mean, I think in this case, you know, half dome is definitely the the subject, and, and this is definitely crazy. I mean, we'll do like a ten percent. It's just yeah. to give like a an extreme example, right? A slight. You you don't want to notice it, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe even a five, you know, some, something there where it looks like a pretty natural, mm -hmm. like this would be out of focus if you were focused on this. Yeah, no, that's, wow, um, that's instantly makes it look more cinematic, right? Yeah, it definitely makes, you know, draws your eye right to where you want it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a pretty, pretty simple trick that, you know, Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when I'm doing like dream sequences or things like right. that, you'll do a very subtle version of this and, you know, the viewer won't notice. Yeah, but I think, so here's the before and the after and, uh, wow. And this does kind of Stunning. go, <laughs> this does kind of go with the, uh, Cameron told me he really loves the like teal and orange filter. Yeah. And just naturally, like that's yeah. kind of what we no, get this is from, the, this, from is, this footage. This um, is great. This gives me a great starting point for the rest of the, of the project. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well done. All right, guys. So that takes care of that. John did some great color editing. I, I can't thank you enough, man. I mean, everything you did was was fantastic. Really, really beautiful and nice. Yeah, no problem. So fun. if you guys liked what you saw, like, subscribe, or dislike. I can handle the honest feedback. It's totally fine. But anyways, go out there and do something creative.